Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here, and welcome back to Fallout 4, and it's beautiful, irradiated world. Let me just straight away say that this video is going to be about a certain villain, or I guess, maybe hero, who's missing from the game. You see, if the player character joins the Institute and listens very carefully, you'll occasionally hear about this scientist named Dr. Zimmer who apparently once occupied an incredibly important role in the organization, but hasn't been heard from in years. There are no quests about him or anything, Dr. Zimmer is only mentioned in passing a couple of times, and in a few conversations that randomly play out between Institute staff. However, if you dig deep enough, there is a very interesting story here, one that we're going to be investigating today. Now, as many of you know, while Dr. Zimmer is merely mentioned in Fallout 4, the dude literally appeared in the flesh as a character we could meet in Fallout 3, which takes place 10 years ago. What was he doing in the Capital Wasteland back then? Well, he was involved in this certain side quest called The Replicated Man, which we'll analyze. As a matter of fact, there were a handful of very well-hidden, yet huge secrets in Fallout 3 about Dr. Zimmer that I don't think I've seen anyone else talk about, and I literally just uncovered after 12 years. Yes, despite Fallout 3 having released in 2008, there are things I've just found out. Like, there are a couple of details we can only uncover with console commands, and these really elaborate clues Bethesda hidden places you wouldn't expect. I personally must have played through The Replicated Man at least 15 times and never noticed anything. However, enough hyping things up. Let's actually get started with the investigation. We'll begin by pointing out every single instance Dr. Zimmer's name is mentioned in Fallout 4, whether it was in dialogue or written down on a terminal somewhere. This will give us a neat little trail to start following, as well as introduce us to a lot of information that's going to become helpful later on. I'll also dissect a few noteworthy things about Zimmer in Fallout 4's Game Files and Creation Kit that aren't available in normal gameplay. Then we'll move into Fallout 3 and look into the man's role in that side quest, as well as point out all those secrets I hyped up so much. When all's said and done, we're definitely going to be left with a lot of questions. More than what we started with, honestly. But more importantly, we're going to make a discovery or two that'll change the way you look at the Institute for the worse. Anyway, without any further ado, let's do further and figure out what happened to Fallout 4's mysterious Dr. Zimmer. Alrighty, so as promised, we're starting our investigation by analyzing what Fallout 4 tells us about Dr. Zimmer. Chances are, the first time you'll hear his name will be during the player's first visit to the Institute's headquarters. Which is frankly just such a big moment in the game, it's difficult to pay attention to more minor details. It's during this initial visit we're hit with the shocking plot twist that our son Sean, who we thought was kidnapped by the Institute just 10 years ago, was really taken around 60 years ago, and is now their leader. Sean, whose official title is Director, provides us with a brief overview of the Institute's history explaining that the organization was originally founded by some professors and researchers at the old Commonwealth Institute of Technology, who managed to survive the Great War by fleeing in some bunkers that were evidently beneath the campus. Over the next 210 years, those lucky survivors and their many, many descendants continued to live underground, and greatly expanded the first bunkers into the giant, futuristic subterranean biosphere the Institute inhabits today. Notably, Sean reveals that for the last century or so, the organization has been manufacturing human-esque androids called synths that they basically use as workers and sometimes soldiers. The first two generations, or versions, of synth ever made were quite impressive pieces of technology in their own right. But our son reveals that when the Institute abducted him 60 years ago, they used his uncontaminated human DNA to create the third generation, or version, of synth. And these Gen 3 synths are so advanced, they're indistinguishable from actual human beings. Wow. Okay, cool story, Nate, but where does Dr. Zimmer fit into all of this again? 
Well, after your history lesson is over, Sean will ask that the player go introduce themselves to a number of the Institute's highest ranking members. One of the people we're specifically told to meet is a man named Justin Ayo, who is the acting head of the Synth Retention Bureau, or the SRB, as it's often abbreviated to. The SRB is an elite branch of the Institute, whose sole job is to prevent synths from escaping and tracking down those that do. You see, the Generation 3 synths are just so advanced, they sometimes become self-aware and try to run away. Hence, the SRB. Now, Father has asked that I provide you with a brief overview of the Synth Retention Bureau. Our primary responsibility is the recovery of escaped synths that are hiding among the human population on the surface. We can't allow sophisticated Institute technology to fall into the wrong hands. The results could be disastrous. Though, wait a minute. I just said that Dr. Ao is only the acting head of the SRB. Who is he filling in for? Well, thankfully, you can ask him. Take a listen to what he says. If you're the acting head of the SRB, who are you filling in for? Dr. Zimmer holds that position. He's supervising the retrieval of some of the more high-profile units. In his absence, I keep things running smoothly. Ah, so Dr. Zimmer is apparently the head of the Institute Synth Retention Bureau. But he's out of town right now, searching for some high-profile units. Those must have been some very important androids. Oh well. Hope he's doing alright. Now, apparently some people at the Institute aren't very happy with how Ao's been running things in Zimmer's absence. Ao has an aggressive personality, and has been picking fights with members of the Facilities Department, accusing them of being too lazy and not following orders. Despite the fact that Ao doesn't have the right to order anybody around who isn't in the SRB. It's possible to overhear a couple of scientists chatting about how annoying Dr. Ao has become, and how much they wish that Dr. Zimmer was still leading the Synth Retention Bureau. Take a listen. You'd think Justin Ao would have better ways to spend his time than to make ridiculous accusations. All I want is to be able to work in peace. Is that so much to ask? Oh, I do miss Dr. Zimmer. If he were here, none of this nonsense would be happening. So, many people here still miss Zimmer, and viewed him as a much more reasonable leader. The only time Dr. Zimmer's name will come up again is during the quest, Plugging a Leak, which the player will only receive if they've joined the Institute and progressed rather far with their quest line. During this mission, we learn that Justin Ao suspects someone within the organization is helping Synths escape for some reason, and he asks if we can help him find out who. Long story short, after a brief investigation, we discover that the culprit is a young boy named Liam Benet, who's been letting Synths escape because he feels sorry for them. Now, after making this revelation, we can immediately turn Liam in, and he'll be banished from the Institute. Or, we can instead choose to frame Dr. Ao and get him banished instead. Why would we do such a thing? Well, Ao is kind of a huge jerk to everybody in the faction, the player character included. And as we just mentioned, he has a reputation for being aggressive and resorting to violence way more often than is necessary. Liam, on the other hand, may be breaking the rules, but he's only doing it because it's what he believes is right. And by contrast, Mr. Benet is always super nice to the player, and will even confess to his crimes when asked politely. Furthermore, Liam says this about Ao. Look, now that you know, you have a choice to make. You could tell Justin. But I have a proposal for you. I want to frame Justin Ao. Look, ever since Dr. Zimmer left, he's been out of control. He and his coursers have been pushing people around and threatening them to get what he wants. Huh. I guess Zimmer really was a better boss. Nonetheless, if you decide to go through with framing Dr. Ao, he'll be banished from the Institute, and a scientist named Elena Secord will take his place as the head of the Synth Retention Bureau. After assuming her new role, she may say this. First Dr. Zimmer, then Dr. Ao. How many people is SRB gonna lose? I personally thought this statement was kind of funny, 
because Dr. Zimmer is supposedly still active working on behalf of the Institute, and will be back soon. He's not lost in the same sense Dr. Justin Ayo is, yet Elena seems to imply he's gone. However, maybe Bethesda didn't mean anything here. Regardless, that's the last time Zimmer's name is spoken in Fallout 4. It's not featured in any other dialogue files. Although, there are still a couple of terminals that mention him. Sean's personal computer features a status report from the SRV that explicitly states, quote, Director Zimmer is still offline, end quote. Offline is a term used by the Institute to describe agents and or synths whom they're no longer in communication with. So Dr. Zimmer, wherever he is, is not currently communicating with the Institute, and not even they can be sure of his whereabouts. Or, come to think of it, we don't even know how long he's been gone in the first place. So, it's entirely possible the man is dead somewhere and will never be returning. Now, aside from that, there's one other terminal entry we can find that directly mentions Dr. Zimmer by name. Interestingly, it was written in July of the year 2277, 10 years ago. The entry was written by the leader of the Institute's Bioscience Division, who had been testing the effects of something on live humans at Zimmer's request. Supposedly. I'll just read it to you. Quote, Latest round of testing complete. Results are all within expected parameters. Inform Dr. Zimmer directly, as he had ordered the tests personally. He seemed annoyed with the results, unsure what he was looking for. He declined to specify why he wanted the tests run to begin with. End quote. Given what we know about the Institute's Bioscience Division, the exact thing they were probably testing on Zimmer's behalf was a man-made virus known as the Forced Evolutionary Virus, or FEV, that would end up creating super mutants. Why would Dr. Zimmer, an SRB agent, care about that stuff? What was he hoping to find in the data? Who knows? Now that we've gone over all the terminal entries and dialogue, though, let's pause for a second and consolidate everything we've learned. Dr. Zimmer was once the leader of the Synth Retention Bureau, and left some time ago to pursue some rather important escapes since. We're unsure how long he had been out on that mission, but he's currently not active with the Institute. He was definitely around back in 2277 when he ordered those tests from the Bioscience Department a decade ago, though his motivations were unclear. Alrighty, with all of this information in our minds, let's finally jump into Fallout 3 and meet the man in the flesh. First things first, Fallout 3 begins in October of 2277, 10 years prior to the events of Fallout 4, and just a couple months after Dr. Zimmer observed the Bioscience Department's FEV experiments. Huh, what a coincidence. We specifically get to meet Dr. Zimmer at Rivet City, an old aircraft carrier turned sprawling settlement in the capital wasteland. He can be found in the laboratory of the town scientist, a woman named Madison Lee, where Zimmer will be arguing with her assistant as we enter. The man apparently needs to see Dr. Lee personally, but she's unavailable at the moment, much to his frustration. When approached by the player, Zimmer will ask if you're interested in some work, and claims to have a big job for you. I'll just let him explain the rest. This could be an opportunity of a lifetime for you. I've misplaced some very sensitive property, and you will help me find it. Hmm, how do I put this in a way you'll understand? All you know of robots are those buckets of bolts, those Mr. Handshakers and whatnot. Well, that's not all a robot can be. You see, in the Commonwealth, we've made artificial persons, synthetic humanoids, programmed to think and feel and do whatever we need. And occasionally, they get confused and wander off. Nonsense! This is a machine we're talking about. Can you enslave a generator or a water purifier? Of course not. The same principle applies. But let's get back to your mission. You are to find this missing android. I've tracked him to somewhere here in the capital wasteland. He must have done something drastic, 
like facial surgery and a mind wipe, or else I would have found him by now. It will be no easy task. He may not even realize he's an android. Don't upset him by talking with him. Just come get me immediately. I'll handle it. Pause right here. Clearly, Zimmer is looking for a synth on behalf of the Institute. Though he doesn't mention the Synth Retention Bureau or anything like that. Which honestly makes sense, given that Fallout 3 came out in 2008, seven years before Fallout 4's 2015 release. Bethesda probably just didn't have the Institute's lore very well fleshed out when writing this quest. Anyway, after agreeing to help him out, you can ask Dr. Zimmer for some more information, and take a listen to what he tells the player about the droid. By God, you're as annoying as you are clever. Very well, I'll tell you what you want to know, if it helps you locate my property. The duty of this particular unit was the hunting and capturing of other escaped androids. Yes, others have escaped. It's one of the side effects of having such an advanced AI. Machines start to think for themselves, fool themselves into believing they have rights. And so, this particular android may have believed he'd done something wrong, immoral, and wanted to forget those deeds. Satisfied now? This particular android, designation A321, is different, special, the most advanced synthetic humanoid I've ever developed. The others, like my escort Armitage there, are all older models, easily replicated. Ah, but A321? It will take years to recreate him. So you see, this android must be located at all costs. The others are all acceptable losses, but A321, he is irreplaceable. Ah, so this bot is very special, because it was one of the first ever made by the Institute to hunt down other robots. In Fallout 4, we can meet this type of synth. They're called Coursers, and they are some of the most powerful characters in the entire game. They boast incredibly advanced technology that makes them exceptionally powerful in combat, incredibly strong, and they're even capable of teleportation. So it makes perfect sense why Dr. Zimmer really, really needs to get this one back, especially if it's one of the first ever models. Nonetheless, after the conversation is concluded and you've accepted the mission, the quest, The Replicated Man, begins. And you'll be sent on a bit of a search throughout Rivet City, where you'll have to talk to other characters, gather evidence, and locate a number of holotapes that the synth apparently made before suffering a mind wipe and changing his appearance. Sometime in the middle of our investigation, a woman named Victoria Watts will approach the player and beg that you stop what you're doing. She claims to work on behalf of an organization known as The Railroad. Sound familiar? Victoria explains that members of The Railroad have been secretly helping synths escape from the Institute for years, and it's her job to make sure Zimmer doesn't find that robot. Rather than continuing your manhunt, she asks that you go back to Dr. Zimmer and tell him that the robot's dead. It's gone. That way, he'll stop searching for it, and it can live freely once again. You really want help? Take this. It's an internal component from the very android you're searching for. Don't ask how I obtained it. Present it to Dr. Zimmer in Rivet City. Tell him the android is dead, and that was on the corpse. He'll believe you. Do that, and Zimmer will go back to the Commonwealth and leave that poor soul alone. Do that, and you'll have saved a man's life. Just understand that this android is now, for all intents and purposes, a man. He looks human, he acts human, he believes he is human. But even if he's not, even if he's a machine, he's capable of rational thought and emotion. So you see, his soul is as human as yours or mine. This person, and he is a person, deserves a chance at freedom. Please, if there's a shred of decency in you, don't take that away from him. If you agree, she promises to pay you 50 caps. Which honestly isn't a lot, but it's all she can offer. 
Now, after speaking with Victoria, the quest can immediately end right here if you decide to accept that offer. Just go back to Dr. Zimmer, tell him, yeah bud, sorry your robot's dead, and that will be the end of the replicated man. He'll apparently leave the Capital Wasteland for good, and you'll even earn some positive karma. This is a neuroservo, unique to the A321. I... And you say you got this from his corpse? I suppose there's no other way you could have obtained it. Well, damn it! I was afraid this would happen. Out here in this... this... wasteland. Well, here's 50 caps for your troubles. Try to buy yourself an education out here in this hell. Good day. Let's be honest though, being the good guy is no fun, and 50 caps just ain't enough of a reward. So, if you forget about what Victoria asked and just continue with your search, you'll eventually learn about this man named Horace Pinkerton, who secretly lives towards the bottom of the ship in its bow. Evidently, very few people in Rivet City know about Horace's existence, but long ago he was once a scientist, and was part of the original group of settlers who founded Rivet City in the first place. After some disagreements with other researchers, he entered the self-imposed exile and started secretly living where he does today. Horace apparently performed the facial reconstruction surgery on the synth we're looking for, and therefore, he's the only person in the city who actually knows what the robot looks like. One way or another, we can get him to confess that the android we're looking for is actually named Harkness, and believe it or not, He's the chief of Rivet City's security team. Indeed, the robot arrived decades ago, and after Horace performed the mind wipe and changed his appearance, he somehow rose to the ranks of the town's guard and became its very leader. What are you talking about, boy? I don't know anything about any of that. And, uh, what did you call it? An android? What's that? Fine, whatever. This android... Calls himself Harkness now. Comes in and wants a memory job. I took new memories and replaced his old ones. Don't believe anyone's done that before. Certainly not down here. That Commonwealth tech isn't all that fancy when it comes down to it. After we've learned this, we'll have a very, very important decision to make. If we tell Dr. Zimmer everything, he and his bodyguard will confront Harkness, and use some sort of strange code to cause Harkness to fall unconscious. After which, Zimmer will reward you with some caps and a very powerful unique blaster rifle. He'll then promise to take Harkness's limp body back to the Commonwealth and put him back to work. There you are! I must say, you had me completely fooled. You're very clever, A3-21, but not clever enough. Now, come with me. What the hell are you talking about, Zimmer? I swear, I've got enough crackpots on his damn boat. You're coming back with me to the Commonwealth. You're a very important android. You're just a bit confused. Your memories have been altered. I'm going nowhere. I want you off this boat, immediately. I'm done suffering your nonsense. You want to do this the easy way or the hard way? Of course we will be doing things the easy way. I have no intention of harming you. It's time to bid your farewells, Harkness. Zimmer. That's it. You leave me no choice but to use force. A3-21. Initialize factory reset. Authorization code, Beta-5-3-Alpha. What? Alpha. What? A3-21, awaiting initialization protocol parameter. A3-21, awaiting initialization protocol parameters. Alternatively, we can go back to Harkness and tell him everything we found out. At first, he won't believe you, remember he did have his mind wiped, but we can show him a holotape to prove it. After reviewing the holotape, he'll remember everything and become very, very terrified. Harkness does not want to go back. Harkness will then go find Dr. Zimmer and kill him. Alternatively, you can also ask for the honors of killing the doctor. Either way, that's another way this mission can end. And I'm certainly no man's property. Did Zimmer put you up to this? You have exactly five seconds to explain what it is you're trying to do here, or you'll be leaving Rivet City by way of the nearest porthole. 
All right, I'll humor you. But this is impossible. I can't be a robot, I'm a human being. I breathe, I eat. Hell, I cut myself shaving this morning. I was bleeding. Robots don't bleed. I'm not sure what to say. I'm not sure what to even think about all this. I'll admit, this is pretty convincing evidence. But it doesn't make any sense. How can this be possible? Ah! My God. I... I remember. I remember it all. From before. Zimmer. The Commonwealth. The Institute. My God! All those runners I brought down! You... You made me remember. Why? How? I... Never mind. I just... My God! What am I going to do? My life! Everything! It's all a lie! I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to shove him into a very small box and send him north where he belongs. Thank you for warning me about Zimmer, and for keeping this a secret. Here's a little token of my gratitude. Best weapon a man could ask for. Just do me a favor and don't go blasting up my boat. People discharging weapons on my boat tends to get me nervous. Unless I'm the one doing the shooting. To kill dangerous thieves from the Commonwealth, for instance. Now, here's what's so interesting about this ending. If Dr. Zimmer is killed, he'll drop an android component. Android components, of course, are the miscellaneous items dropped by androids when they die in Fallout 3. Similarly, synths in Fallout 4 drop synth components upon their deaths. So, it seems Dr. Zimmer must have been a synth too. Wow! Importantly, and I can't stress this enough, Dr. Zimmer's component isn't in his inventory until he passes away. So it's not like he was just holding onto the component of another synth or something. No, no, no. He was one himself. This is a pretty incredible curveball for obvious reasons. It means the Institute literally trusted a synth to manage an entire division. There are some even bigger implications of Dr. Zimmer's synthetic nature that we'll talk more about later. But now that we've summarized the replicated man's general story and its possible endings, let's dig a little deeper and point some other fascinating details out. Remember Pinkerton, the guy who performed Harkness's facial reconstruction surgery? Well, he's always labeled as an essential character, and no matter who the player sides with or what choices you make, he can never be killed. Even after the quest has been completed, he retains his essential status. However, if killed with console commands, Pinkerton will drop his own synth component just like Zimmer. Yeah, he's a secret synth too. There's no possible way to reveal this fact in normal gameplay. You can't get him to confess or anything, and he's only killable with console commands, again. But this is some pretty concrete evidence. There's also a funny dialogue option where Bethesda's writers appear to have ironically hinted at this reality. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm going to have my android army rise up against you and your human ilk. <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry I couldn't resist. Horace Pinkerton being a synth is a huge deal from a lore perspective, and has consequences that go way beyond just the replicated man quest. Remember how earlier in the video, when I was just introducing him, I mentioned that Horace was a part of the original group of settlers who founded Rivet City 40 years ago, but eventually entered this self-imposed exile? Well, there's more to that story. You see, that original group of settlers were actually the remnants of a scientific organization called the Naval Research Institute, and Horace Pinkerton was their leader. They moved into the old aircraft carrier that we now know as Rivet City 40 years ago when they were looking for a new lab space, and eventually, more and more people started moving in too after they set up shop. Pinkerton created a leadership council to manage this new town, and all was well for a while. Until around 18 years ago, 
when another team of scientists, led by a woman named Dr. Madison Lee, remember her, moved in, and ended up taking over the council and forcing Pinkerton out. These new scientists were apparently obsessed with some project to fix the wasteland's water supply and make it drinkable, that Pinkerton was opposed to and thus had to go. Hence, why he's now hiding beneath the vessel. More than likely, Pinkerton came to the Capital Wasteland after escaping the Institute of the Commonwealth with the help of the Railroad, and his story about some naval research institute and whatnot was just a lie or an implanted memory. In Fallout 4, we learn that since the Railroad help escape from the Institute are usually sent to the Capital Wasteland, as it's much safer than keeping them in the Commonwealth, and the Institute usually doesn't bother to try to get them back. So it makes a lot of sense how both Pinkerton and Harkness could have ended up in Rivet City together. A somewhat popular theory on Reddit is that maybe Horace Pinkerton was the synth Dr. Zimmer was really after, and that Harkness was the wrong one. While I absolutely love that idea and think it would be an even better plot twist, it's probably incorrect. Dr. Zimmer used a specific individual recall code when he captured the chief of security, which wouldn't have worked if Pinkerton was the real target. The last detail I'd like to point out before we start drawing conclusions and looking into cut content is that Zimmer specifically states he made the robot he's looking for, and that he was its creator. Human. So no, he may not be just an ordinary robot, but he's certainly not human, no matter how badly he wishes it so. I made him. I want him. End of story. This could just be a little hyperbole, and it's likely that the entire SRB helped out. But it may explain why Dr. Zimmer ordered those FEV virus tests from the Bioscience Division. In Fallout 4, we find out that the Institute was experimenting with the FE virus with the sole purpose of trying to create and isolate genes that could be used to make their synths stronger and more durable. It's possible that in July of 2277, when the terminal entry was written, that the doc was in the process of creating the robot that would become Harkness, and was just trying to get more data. No matter, theories completely aside, so far in this investigation, we've definitely learned a lot. We learned Zimmer's a synth. We learned that the synth he's looking for was helped by another synth. And we learned that the dude who replaced Zimmer at the Institute isn't a very popular leader. However, even with all of this, we're still no closer to answering the original question that prompted this video. Where is Dr. Zimmer now? What's he doing in 2287? Well, it seems pretty obvious that Bethesda purposely gave him vague whereabouts during Fallout 4, so as to make it seem like any ending to this quest was feasible. I mean, if you killed the dude in Fallout 3, only to find out that he's alive and well in the Institute of Fallout 4, it would have meant your work was for nothing. But, by making his status as mysterious as possible, Bethesda allows players to believe whatever they want. What's so weird, though, is that it appears the developers may have at one point wanted to do something different. As in Fallout 4's game files, there's actually an unused voice type file for a male NPC named Zimmer. There's no dialogue attached to it, and there's literally no other related unused content, but it's here. Even stranger is that by checking its logs, we can see that the last time anyone at Bethesda edited this file was in May of 2013, more than two years before Fallout 4 released. I can't stress just how weird that is enough. I mean, cut content is fairly common, but generally speaking, the latest day any of the game files were modified was in the year 2015, even other unused ones. So Zimmer must have been discarded very, very early on in development. Here's what I think happened. I believe that when Bethesda was writing their replicated man quest in Fallout 3, they already had a very, very good idea of what role the Institute would play in their next game, and had originally anticipated for Dr. Zimmer to return. However, sometime very early in Fallout 4's development, they decided not to include the character, and scrapped whatever they were originally planning, instead choosing to simply include a few vague references here and there. Thus, here we are. Where is Dr. Zimmer? Well, he's in Fallout 4's game files. Unfortunately. Anyway, on that note we are going to wrap up. 
the mysterious story of Fallout 4's most interesting missing character. Thanks so much for stopping by, everybody. What do you think happened? Do you think Dr. Zimmer was really meant to have passed away in the Capital Wasteland, or do you believe he came back? Leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Again, thanks for watching, and hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.